大家好，欢迎来到 Plugged In。你知道四月二十二号到二十九号是 National Organ and Tissue Donation Awareness Week 吗？为了庆祝这一周，我们今天邀请到 Dr. David Landsberg。St. Paul Hospital Renal Translate Program 的创始人与权威来跟我们分享器官捐赠的信息，特别是活体器官捐赠。四月十五至二十一号是 National Volunteer Appreciation Week， 圣诞基金会的义工是最棒的。从 Victoria 到 Whitehorse， 七千名以上的义工们是我们 BC 和 u c o n 分会的支柱。我们衷心感谢每一位义工，如果没有你，我们没有能力去提供如此高品质的服务。今天在 Plugin 里有很多值得庆祝的，不要走开哦。Kidney disease is serious, and until there's a cure, the best available therapy for most with kidney failure is a kidney transplant. However, the need for organs far outweighs the supply. Wait times can be long, and people die waiting for a transplant. One of the ways to address this shortage, to close the gap, is through living kidney donation. Today, we're going to explore, and perhaps even demystify for some, the topic of living kidney donation and transplantation. We're going to find out why living kidney donation is so important, and often the best choice for kidney patients. We'll talk about how a kidney patient might go ahead getting a living kidney donor and what the process looks like. And from the donor's perspective, why would someone consider donating a kidney? Can anyone be a living donor? We'll look at what's involved and how one can find out more if they are considering living donation. And to talk about all of this, we have a very special guest on our show today, a leading expert on this topic, Dr. David Landsberg, Medical Director, Transplant Services, BC Transplant. So stay with us; you're not going to want to miss this interview. 加拿大的 National Volunteer Appreciation Week 将从四月十五号到四月二十一号举行。加拿大肾脏基金会 （BC） 和 u c o n 分会目前已经有七千多名义工分布在各地，以肾脏基金会的名义在各个社区之中无私的奉献。在 BC 和 u c o n 省内，很多地方都设有当地的健康组织，这些组织都会在当地的 Health Fair 及其他公开活动提供关于肾脏基金会的资讯。这些义工在活动当中热心地回答任何疑问，提供申请捐赠者的机会，及跟大家解释肾脏基金会的主旨。让大家了解，基金会是为了提升患者的生活品质而存在的。在深造基金会当义工的人人都将他们的热情与想法灌注在如何让 BC 跟 u c o n 的患者们上过上更好的生活。Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Landsberg. It's my pleasure. A transplant is a treatment, not a cure. But trans, but a transplant is most often the best choice for a dialysis patient. Can you talk about why that is? So you're right. For the majority of people, a kidney transplant is the best treatment. It's the best from many points of view.、Um, from a medical point of view, success rates are are good, and actually, even things like life expectancy、mm-hmm. are better with the transplant than than they than they are with dialysis. As well, there's the whole quality of life. And、so the freedom, the flexibility, the ability to travel, people usually feel stronger. They feel healthier. They're more able to live a normal life. And many people with a transplant live, you know, a very normal life. You would never know that、uh, their neighbors, their friends, would say they're just normal people. And so, so a transplant gives somebody that which you don't get from dialysis. However, it's not for everybody. There are some reasons why somebody. Should not get a transplant because it would be too dangerous, or there are situations where the outcome won't be good enough for us to recommend that as a therapy. Now, maybe this is a good time to talk about the two types of donation. There's living kidney donation and there's deceased. Can you briefly describe、um, the differences between the two? Yes, of course. So, living donation is when a friend, a family member. Uh, somebody from the community, or even a stranger, while alive, with two normal, healthy kidneys, otherwise in good health,、uh, goes into the hospital, has an operation, their kidney is removed, and the kidney is then transplanted into the person who needs it. Other people are on the waiting list. When this will happen randomly when when somebody dies who is a, an organ donor. 
and who is compatible with the patient on the waiting list and they're the person to get it, then they'll get a call coming to the hospital and the transplant will happen at whatever time it needs to happen. So it's done in a, you know, an emergency situation. Living donation is scheduled. The living donation, uh, the, the donor, the donor uh, leaves the hospital, is healthy. The deceased donation is, is when somebody dies, and therefore two kidneys are transplanted. So when there, when there's a deceased donor, usually we're able to do two kidney transplants. As we discussed, living kidney donation is actually the ultimate type of donation. Can you talk about some of the advantages to living kidney donation? So as you say, um, the ability to schedule it and then to make sure that everything is, is good before you go ahead. You can always choose to say, okay, well, maybe we've got to figure this out or maybe we've got to do this and delay it. With deceased donation, first of all, uh, there's a variation in uh, the quality of the donor kidneys and we don't have a lot of time to do a lot of testing to decide. I mean, within a few hours, usually it's, you know, are we going to use this organ or are we not? Uh, sometimes they're fantastic organs, but sometimes they're, they're not as, they haven't been, they're not as strong necessarily as, as living ones. But in, in addition to that, you know, there's the whole trauma that's happened to the donor who's deceased, uh, which, which led up, to, led up to this, that's hard on the kidneys. Uh, whereas with the living donor, none, none of that is, obvious, is obviously in play. So from an outcome point of view, in general, living donor transplants last longer on average than deceased donor kidneys, although some deceased donor kidneys will outlast, uh, you know, even the best living donor kidney, but those are few and far between. So looking at averages, better to have a living donor than a deceased donor. And often with um, a living donor, uh, kidney patients might avoid dialysis. And so that's a key, key, key thing. So the best treatment is never to have to go on to dialysis. And so if you can get a kidney transplant before you start dialysis, that's ideal. The only way you can get a kidney transplant before you start, before you start dialysis is with a living donor. Because of the scarcity of deceased donors, we don't have enough to go around. So we don't even list patients for transplant until they start dialysis in order to be fair to people because you know somebody might be we might be referred two years earlier. They would get an if we just said, okay, as soon as you uh, need one, we'll, we'll list you. Um, they'll get it ahead of the queue of somebody who was referred later. And some people don't even know about kidney disease. And so since we don't have enough to go around anyway, the fairest thing to do is to use dialysis start as the start of your waiting time. Right. So if you're going to get a kidney before you start dialysis, it's mm -hmm. a living donor. As you can imagine, asking someone to donate a kidney to you could be a rather daunting task. We're going to talk to Dr. Landsberg when we return about some tips and tools for how you might go about doing that. So don't go anywhere. 大家好,我是Community Calendar the Alice. 從4月20號到29號是 National Organ and Tissue Donation Awareness Week, 整稱NAVDA. 每年腎臟基金會都會參與NAVDA這一週的活動, 我們打算透過這一週來推廣我們的運動, Saving Lives Through Organ Donation, 並藉此宣傳器官捐贈的重要, 也希望能鼓勵更多人能成為捐贈者。今年其中一个NAVDA的项目将会在4月25号在温华市中心从11点到1点的午餐时间 如果你们想要在这一一重大的活动之中 如果你有这个兴趣参加PKD患者旅程的活动，请你电至荧幕上的号码“肾脏基金会”的header来了解细节。已经迈入九周年的Kidney 
从 c a n a n a s k i s Country 到 Calgary 走达100公里的路程。这难忘的旅程会从 Millarville Race Track 开始，穿过 K Country， 还有 Bright Creek， 然后在 Calgary 的 Canada Olympic Park 画上句点。在参加这个独特艰辛的过程中，还可以和同样有肾脏疾病困扰的人一起交流。Kidney March 是个卓越出色的活动，不要错失参加的机会，跟我们一起留下难忘的回忆吧！现在立刻申请成为 Kidney March 的伙伴，一则请上 kidneymarch.ca 来加入我们。加拿大肾脏基金会是一个支持肾病患者的组织。如果你觉得有什么事件需要我们知道的，请告诉我们。透过 Twitter 与我们取得联系，或者在我们的 Facebook 页面上给我们留言。我是 Alice， 谢谢您收看今天的 Community Calendar。If you have kidney disease, receiving a transplant before you need to start dialysis is called a preemptive transplant, and that's what happened to Kate. When Kate first met Brian, she was living with kidney disease. They fell in love. And a few short years later, Brian not only gave Kate his heart, but his kidney too, as her living kidney donor. Today, Kate and Brian take us back to where this happily ever after love story first began. Ah,、uh, it was it was a number of years ago that we first met,、um, but about five years ago we reconnected.、Um, asked her out on a date and took her out to、uh, to the Whitecaps game the next day and. End up spending about 12 hours together,、um, and since then we've been inseparable. We've、uh, we've done a whole lot of trips together, been down to the states, gone on trips with family,、um, and then about a year and a half ago we ended up getting married、uh, across the water from where we reconnected. When we first met Brian, because we knew each other for a number of years, of course,、um, we、um, he knew that I was living with kidney disease,、um, but of course, shortly after we started dating. It kind of came up、um, that you know at some point I would need a transplant, and so、um, that was something that you know was always kind of there. But I was fortunate at the time that I had stabilized for a handful of years、um, and、uh, had been able to live generally a pretty normal life. I think our first part of our relationship was pretty non. Medical、uh, <laughs> busy, I guess would be the best way to put it.、Um, but shortly,、uh, well, about a year ago,、um, we、uh, unfortunately my function started to decline, and so it came to light that I was going to need、uh, a transplant. And of course,、uh, the best、um, kind of outcome that you can get from is having a living donor、um, and trying to do it preemptively before.、Um, Needing dialysis, and I was getting close to needing it. So the the time was was then to get things started. And、um, Brian,、uh, along with a handful of、uh, friends and family, also stepped forward. And、uh, which is, you know, it's a hard question to ask. It's、uh, it's a big question to ask.、Um, to you know, do a ask them to give a, a body part, and for me specifically, a kidney.、Um, for me, it was、yeah. it was something I had thought about years ago、um, when. Before I even thought of asking her to marry me, it was it was a thought that I had to run through. What's going to happen? What am I going to do、um, if she gets to the point of needing a transplant? And the thought of donating a kidney, the thought of surgery in general, is very scary.、Um, Kate's involved in a, a number of kidney programs、um, within BC as well as across Canada, and I was lucky lucky enough to be able to talk to a few different people. And through that, I was able to get their perspective, see what they went through, see their recovery, see, get a general overview of what being a donor means.、Um, my big question for everyone was, would you do it again? If you could. If you could. But you can't. <laughs> If you could, would you do it again? And every person that I spoke to,、yeah. with no doubt, no hesitation in their voice, absolutely stated, I would. And me being six months post surgery now,、um, I can definitely answer that question. Absolutely, I would donate again if I had the chance. Yeah. So you know, I guess for rewinding, you know, clearly we're now kind of six months almost past our surgery date. But、um, you know, when Brian went forward, there was a you know there is quite a lengthy process, and、um, you know, I think our process went. Almost as well as it could have, but you know, a few little hiccups here and there. But overall, the process to finding a living donor,、um, you know, it's a really nerve-wracking time. You know, I'm I'm worrying about my health and 
where that's going to go. Was I going to need dialysis or not? Um, where, you know, and then Brian's going through the process, you know, if I am a match, what does that mean? If I'm not a match, um, you know, then there was the question of if he wasn't a match or someone else um, that was testing wasn't a match, would they be willing to go into the paired exchange program? which of course is, um, they're not a match to the direct person, but could donate um, and start a chain across the, the country. And, um, but we were just so fortunate that, who knew the man I would marry um, <laughs> would be um, a perfect enough match, um, both uh, compatibility-wise as well as, I guess, kidney-wise, um, that my body would, uh, would seem to accept it, and so far has done a very good job, and here I am now feeling way better than I was, uh, you know, six months ago when I walked into that hospital for, for that life-saving surgery. So what are your plans for the future? Mm. Well, then eventually a family. Yes. Um, for right now, enjoying things as they are. It's making sure that she stays healthy over the coming months and, and into the future. Um, and, and as much as we want to start the family, it's, I want to make sure that she's healthy and, and I have a great long life with her. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> 3月是 Kidney Health Month 在这个月肾脏基金会的义工会在BC和Yukon的各处社区募款 从9月到10月,BC和Yukon的义工会一同参加肾脏基金会的周年 Kidney Walk Campaign来募款 资助相关的机构和服务 从Victoria到Prince George到Whitehorse 二十个市区同心协力的西上携带 为社会贡献 志愿者用他们的时间与才能来参与当地社区的重大活动 如节日与游行 当然,谁不喜欢游行呢? I just want to talk about how someone goes about getting a living kidney donor. I mean, I can imagine they would think about their family and their friends and their colleagues, but it's, it seems, you know, it's, it's a big ask and, and it seems like it could even be a difficult task. So how would someone go about starting that conversation? So a, a, a very important message is that people don't realize is that it's not like bone marrow transplant where the matching and the closeness of the match is critical. There is a degree of matching which has to occur. Mm -hmm. You need to be of a compatible blood group and you, there needs to be a situation where the person who needs the kidney doesn't have any antibodies in their blood against the donor. If those two conditions are satisfied, then the degree of matching isn't that important. We can get away with less good matching because of our anti-rejection drugs. So flipping it around, as long as you're not incompatible, right. then it's good enough. And so there are a lot of people out there with whom you're not incompatible, with whom you are actually compatible enough to get a kidney transplant. So sure, the best match would be if it's your brother, but even somebody who's unrelated to you, even a stranger, may be very well compatible with you. And so these days we've definitely seen less of an emphasis on family donations, less of an emphasis on siblings, more of an emphasis on friends, and even more extended uh, relationships. Work, work friends, um, even people um, who are through social media who are, are friends, but are willing to make, to do this. So uh, the, the potential for donation, the people who will come forward, it, 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 it always amazes me about who's good, you know. Well, there's anonymous who, donors too. Yeah, I mean, that, I that is absolutely <laughs> what you're saying is the circle can be quite wide for people. That's looking. right. So I'm encouraged people to consider a wide circle. It's true that probably that your closer circle are the most likely ones to do right. it. But if you don't have anybody in your close circle who's, who is able to do it, then it's it's a good idea to look more widely. Now, how do you ask? somebody to do this, that's... <laughs> that's a whole other question, isn't it? Big, that, yeah, that's a big, big ask, it, it, yeah. It's a big ask, yeah. and you know, uh, we feel very strongly that uh, patients need to be educated and to, to raise awareness with, within them about safety of living donation, and then get tips, actually, you know, on, on, on how to make the ask. 
So we have printed material, we have uh, sample letters, we'll work with somebody to devise a, a strategy of uh, how they're going to reach their community and it'll be different things for different people. Even for some people, younger people, they communicate with their friends on social media. Social sure. media might, mm -hmm. might be the right answer. Jesse 我家庭醫生更加是每三個月就叫我回去見一次 作为一个神病人的太太和我在华人互助会认识很多神病的朋友 BC和UCOM分会中有一个由12个小孩组成的团队来协助患有肾脏相关疾病又或是正在等待器官捐赠的孩子们 Donor Mentorship Program 是一个以活体器官捐赠者所组织成的一个团队同样的肾脏基金会的义工也会组成互助协会 Happy Volunteer Appreciation Week 由衷的致你们每一个孜孜不倦的义工多亏了你们让世界变得更美好 Is everybody eligible for a kidney transplant? Sure, there's a fair number of people who aren't eligible and mostly it, it just has to do with expectations and outcome and whether they can tolerate the surgery um, and whether they can tolerate the anti-rejection drugs and the anti-rejection drugs may also may have bad consequences for them. So if somebody has let's say cancer and uh, they're on treatment for their cancer then they would not be in a good enough shape to be able to withstand the anti-rejection drugs. If somebody has a very bad heart um, then the surgery itself may put them at big risk because we have to give a lot of intravenous fluid during the surgery to sort of get the kidney kick-started and if your heart isn't strong enough to be able to handle that then the surgery becomes quite risky. So when is somebody not able to get a transplant? Usually it's because they have they a have bad disease condition. like cancer or another really you know significant medical disease but it usually comes down to the heart and the blood vessels. Right. And so some people have such diseased blood vessels from years on dialysis with a lot of calcium in them that technically it's impossible for us to actually get, get to the blood vessel, be able to sew the new kidney's blood vessel onto that blood vessel. And so sometimes we have to say, you know, unfortunately we can't do it to get to your blood vessels. So those, those are the big reasons. Do we have a sense of like a percentage of how many kidney patients that have to be on dialysis or, or cannot go the route of, of transplantation? Well, it also depends on age, right? So, you know, clearly we've expanded our, uh, our, our age limits and we've transplanted people in their 80s, but at some point, 
And that's an interesting point because I think a lot of people wouldn't realize that in your 80s, someone is, it's still possible to have a transplant. Not for everybody. Yeah. Sure. I think, you know, but you have, so our, our guiding principle is if we think you have five years of life ahead of you mm -hmm. uh, with a transplant, uh, with a reasonable expectation of success for five years, then we think it's the right thing to do. And so there's a percentage of people on dialysis who are just, you know, past that point. Right. And we know there's a lot of elderly people on dialysis. And so it's those people, it's mostly those people on dialysis, the, the, the very elderly or the very frail. So putting it at a number, it's, it's about 30%. Probably who are that right. who are medically not not strong enough. We're going to talk about why would someone actually consider donating a kidney? Did you know one organ donor can save up to eight lives? You're more likely to need a transplant than you are to become an organ donor. Donation is considered only after all life-saving efforts are made, and it's certain you will not survive. So two physicians who are independent of both the donation program and of the transplant program must declare an individual neurologically dead before organ donation can proceed. Any British Columbian who is 19 or older can register their decision about organ donation, and parents can register their children. You only need to register your decision once. A decal on your driver's license or care card is no longer enough. Register or verify your decision about organ donation at transplant.bc.ca. And now you know. And now you know. And now you know. And now you know. Oh, is it rolling? OK, OK. Did you know one organ donor can save up to eight lives? <laughs> okay, hang on a second here. Let me just adjust my glasses so I can actually read that. Okay, go ahead. But I gotta take care of this kid's because <laughs> he'll give me a hard time if I don't. Register or verify your decision on organ donation. Sorry, about organ donation. Sorry. <laughs> One second. <laughs> and now you know. 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 And